All right. So, uh, welcome to another Pandemic Horde lecture. Uh, this time we're lucky enough to have Steve Bornikin. Uh So, Steve, why don't you just give us a bit of your background and your, you know, history in EVE and what you're really known for and what this talk is all about today. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm Steve Nookin, also known as Fuzzy Steve and various out-of-game things. Uh, I currently run a website called Fuzzwork Enterprises, where you can go to get information on manufacturing stuff. I'm also one of the members of the CSM. Uh, I'm assuming people know what that is for now, but if not, well, there's Google. Um, mostly there for industry and third party stuff. I make most of my Eskin Eve by making stuff. Um, I don't blow stuff up as much as I would like at times, but that's purely time. Um, so, uh, as I said, I mostly make stuff. Industry in Eve has changed uh, relatively recently. Uh, with the uh, stuff that came out, I think it was in Cryus. I think, pretty sure it was Cryus, um, and that took away a lot of the barriers of entry. And uh, the main one being, you no longer need a skill at five to be profitable, uh, and cut down on what you need to do to research and so on and so on. Um, so, industry is profitable, which is a good thing for people. Um, however, it's a lot more unstable than it used to be and what I mean with that is it used to be that you could make pretty much anything except some ships and you'd make money and you'd consistently make money with it that's not so much the case now because it's with the barriers to entry having gone away um, the market can get flooded at times which tends to drop the floor out and make it not quite so profitable. Um, but that's only on particular items. So the main effect of that is you just have to be willing to uh, look, um, change what you're making uh, on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis um, and occasionally be willing to just sit on stuff you've made until the price comes back up to a reasonable level. So, um, I probably should have planned this out better. I'm always bad at this kind of talk. Uh, anyway, um, when you are making stuff, the first thing to be aware of is what to make. I can't tell you, make this and it will always be profitable because there is nothing which will always be profitable. What you want to do is look at what people use and what is... Well, it's like if you've got a common uh, fleet comp, you look at that and go, what is needed for this fleet comp? Ships. Uh, the bigger ones can make money. Um, unfortunately, some people don't... Um, I hate it when I lose words. They don't pay attention to all the costs that they've going, got coming in. So they sell at a price which makes them f less profitable. That's happening less now, but it is still happening. Um, you'll often find these people being referred to as believing minerals that I mine are free. Uh, it's not the case. What you should be doing is um, looking at every cost that you've got coming in and treating it as if you were buying it off the market. Uh, if you can get it cheaper, great. But that's not a manufacturing profit. So if you use that to subsidize your manufacturing, you're effectively throwing away ISK, which is less than optimal, should we say. Um, anyway, and I've got off the track which I was going to be on. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. You look at what people use. Yeah. Uh, you look at what people are going to be using, because while ships go in and out of fashion, the modules for ships, that's less so. Uh, um, yeah, I really should turn off the text to speech on this, uh, <laughs> keep getting distracted. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, so you'll have certain types of guns which are always going to be used. You have your tank modules, which are always going to be used. Now, the one upside of that is 
they will always sell. The downside is the more common they are, the more likely other people are to make them. So the profit margin might not be what you want. Before you make anything, what you want to do is run the numbers on stuff. Look at whether you will make a profit if you are buying stuff at Jita or possibly a different region's uh, mineral costs and all of that. Even if you're actually doing the mining yourself or getting it cheaper, look at it as if you were just buying it straight off the market. Because if you didn't, well, you could just sell it on the market and make a bigger profit. So anyway, you look at it as if you were just buying it and then run the numbers using something. Um, my website, for example, makes this very, very easy. You just go in, you pick which blueprint you want, pick your ME level and uh, your uh, TE level, and pick if you're doing it in a station, if the station has uh, any bonuses, and which system you're in. I'll get back to the system in a moment. And then just look at the numbers and go, this would make me so much profit in so much time. Um, that's the really important thing with this. It's not the profit margin which is important. It's the profit that you'll make over time. Because you could make one thing and it would might make you 50 million-esque. But if you could make 10 things in that time, which would send, sell for a 10 million-esque profit, your profit margin is smaller, but uh, you make more money overall. Um, obviously, sometimes you want to look at things differently because sometimes um, that would allow, well, uh, I know exactly what I mean. Um, you want to make something uh, for your alliance, your corporation, or that kind of thing. At that point, things get a little different on what you might want to make and where your profit margins are important because you may have an additional stream coming in at that point. Like, you may have your windows coming in at a lower rate because they're being paid for by the corporation instead of being paid for by you. So you can adjust your profit margins at that point. Uh, because the corporations decided we need this thing made. Um, that you probably won't find that particularly often, but I can't speak of that too much because I've not been part of your alliance. Um, anyway, going back to where you make things, uh, what you'll find is you have various uh, index levels for industry set on your systems. The more industry that happens in the system, the higher that level will be. Unfortunately, the higher the level is, the worse, uh, well, the more it will cost you to actually make stuff. Um, sometimes that can be made up for by the fact that you don't have to shift your materials so much. Um, obviously, it depends what you're making. If you're making ships, then shifting ships around takes a lot of cargo space. If you're making modules, modules don't really take a lot of cargo space to move a thousand. You can do it in a DST. Um, so, you can get at that using the star map. You can just set which levels you want to look at. You'll have various ones which are important for just manufacturing or copying or research or invention. Uh, they all handle different index levels, so you want to look at them. If you're manufacturing high sec, uh, what you would normally look for is a system which has, if you're doing it in a POS, you're doing it in a system which has none of those services in a station. That way, you're only competing with other people in POS to do that, so it should be lower. Uh, for example, if you were to manufacture everything in JITA, you'd have a 10% premium uh, on the material costs just because of that. Whereas out in the back of nowhere, or even just six, seven systems away, you can get that down to 1%, and that's a 10% profit well, 9% profit, you're making over that profit which someone in Jita would make. It, the numbers are a little more complicated, but I think that's a level of detail which we don't need to go into there. Uh, it's stuff that CCP does to avoid people being able to manipulate the market. And... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, looking at the questions which have been asked... Um, yeah, so there's one about, uh, yeah. is there an option to input the blueprint cost into your, which I assume is your website, uh, tools in the ISK per hour tool? 
uh, as in, well, I'm assuming that's as in the cost of the blueprint when you initially buy it. And the answer to that is no, there's nothing on my tools for that because in the end, the blueprint does not devalue. It's an asset. Uh, so you're not going, I will do this and then I am going to charge myself for it. Uh, for however long, uh, however many ones I want before it pays itself back. That's possibly not what some people would want, but it's the way I use it, so it's the way I vote it. Um, that's something where sometimes you want to build your own tool just to do things exactly the way that you want. Okay, do we have uh, any questions from the Mumble group that's on right now? Okay, I guess not. Actually, I got one. Uh, Steve, can you go over uh, how the system indexes are calculated? It's, it is, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a kind of a logarithmic uh, scale, not linear. Is that right? Um, not exactly. Um, it's based off the percentage number of jobs which are done in that system compared to the whole rest of EVE. Uh, I don't think they've released the exact math which is used for it, and obviously they haven't released the number of jobs, but I believe at least it's a linear scale. So yeah, in Jita you're getting significantly higher numbers being done. I might be wrong about that. Uh, in the end, it doesn't make a huge difference unless you're manufacturing a hell of a lot. Um, one person probably won't manufacture enough to make uh, the indexes change. A corp of 10 people probably can, but I've never been able to get it to shift more than 1% or so. Because I've, I've noticed uh, I've moved systems a couple times and... Um, we go to a system that has had no industry going on, uh, so it's like 0.1% or whatever, and then within a couple of weeks, it's somewhere around 2-3%. But if we're in a system that's like at 35 already, it doesn't really change that much. Uh, part of that may be the fact that it's running on a 28-day rolling average. Yeah, it was really annoying when we moved into HET. His uh, index was still fucked from when Brave lived there. Yeah. Um, I can understand why they put it in that way. Uh, it's less than ideal, obviously, but it means that you don't go, I get into the system, I put in 10 jobs, and then I give it two days before I put in more jobs just to make sure that the index doesn't change. The rolling average means it's less likely to do that. No, is it number of jobs or number of hours per job? Uh, it's minute, well, it's based off the number of minutes of jobs which are run. Uh, so it's a direct correlation at that point. I'm not entirely sure how it handles it if you cancel jobs. I suspect that will still add to it, uh, just down to how uh, that used to be managed, but I may be wrong there. It probably gets cal calculated because if a job is longer than when, when the um, average is calculated, then it would fuck it up if it didn't calculate running jobs. Yeah. Wait, is that timer thing still going on? Oh, yeah, uh, I don't know. We're live on a Twitch stream doing our lecture, so maybe go to the other channel. Not currently in EVE. Okay, uh, so Steve, I have a question. When it yep. comes to industries, like what are some of the core skills you always want to have, regardless of uh, being a new player entering the game or someone who is coming back to the game and is like, oh, I want to try out industry for the first time, you know, after a five year break or whatever? Um, things are a lot better there than they used to be. It used to be that you needed a skill at at least four better be five uh, to reduce the waste that you have that's now gone away completely so if you just want to try out industry you can strictly get away with no um, additional skills other than what you need to actually make the blueprint which i think tends to just be industry one um, 
in general, though, you'll want to increase um, your industry just to make sure that it doesn't take so long. Uh, there are a few other skills like mass production and advanced mass production, which you really want if you're going to be doing anything long term, uh, just because that will increase the number of slots that you have to do stuff in. But these days, essential skills, not really so many. It's just skills to make things a bit quicker. Um, the top of my head I can't think what they are because I haven't needed to train them for quite a long time um, but yeah in these days not so important um, I would normally suggest um, that you have some skills for doing some of the haulage yourself and if you're hauling stuff you want to be able to fit some kind of tank because hauling without a tank is of course dumb uh, although at least in high sec you can get around uh, not having that by getting other people to do it for you, uh, like Red Frog or whatever, uh, push or there's another one kicking around. But yeah, there's plenty of things out there to get people to haul for you. Um, but still, you want to do some of the hauling yourself just because it cuts down on your costs. Uh, but yeah, skill-wise, not really so many skills which are needed. Um, I think I've got a blog post on that somewhere, but it's probably out of date. Uh, and there's another question I had, not super related, but somewhat. It's when it comes down to blueprints and the differences between blueprint originals and blueprint copies, and how does that play a role into the industry for a new player to get accustomed to? Okay. Um, the main thing, well, uh, the difference between the blueprint original and blueprint copy is the originals, you can re do research, make them better, and they don't run out. Uh, you can only have it installed in one one at a time, as many runs as you want, obviously, but just one at a time. Whereas a copy has a limited number of runs that you can do off it, and once it's gone, it's gone. And you cannot make the blueprint any better. Um, there, so the main difference there is a blueprint copy is an asset which is used up. So you have to take that copy cost into account when you're doing your manufacturing. Whereas with an original, you can if you want to, but the cost, it doesn't actually get used up. So the cost is pretty much negligible. Um, uh, if it takes you 100 runs to, man to get your money back, it's taking you 100 runs. That's not a big deal. Uh, whereas with a uh, copy, you cannot get away with uh, dealing with the, your accounting that way. Um, the main thing about it is I, when you're starting out, you'll want to get your blueprints um, at a high ME level just to reduce how much waste you've got. Well, it's not waste anymore strictly. It's just they're cheaper to manufacture off. Um, so you'll want a high ME, but ME takes time to research. Um, that takes science and to I think it's just science to do research on most of them uh, and I think research reduces how much time it takes but I may be wrong about that either way you'll want to do some research there um, that's gonna take time and it will take ISK because you've got to pay for that it's a lot easier to do research in high sec now because pretty much all stations, um, well, it used to be you had a limited number of slots on the station and they were all used up for like 30 days in advance. Um, whereas now you don't have that limitation. Um, the costs obviously go up, but that's less important. Um, yeah, uh, I would suggest for a beginner, look at uh, what you can get contract wise for blueprints, but Obviously, the cost will be there, and you have to account for that when you're manufacturing stuff. It's less than optimal uh, to depend on other people's copies for that. The only place where I would really suggest people work on copies is when they're doing manufacture of capitals and so on, because that is a hell of an outlay uh, initially. You're talking to manufacture a dreadnought 20, 30 billion at least, in blueprints and that's before you've done much research on them um, it's a huge cost and you don't want to be leaving those out in a pos or whatever you want them in a station and then you work off the copies obviously it increases your costs but the risk is too high to keep them out there and if you're just getting started it's as i said a hell of an outlay
And how do uh, you do the researcher blueprints? Because they've changed that up recently uh, with those. Um, was it the not the Aegis? Uh, Start with the C. That that expansion. Uh, Cryus. Yeah. Um, research is pretty much uh, almost identical to manufacturing in that you get your blueprint into a station which has research slots onto the appropriate post structure or an appropriate outpost. Uh, you right click on the blueprint, use blueprint. You then click on the option for the kind of research you want. Any research is important from the point of view that it reduces the costs. T research is less important, but has a benefit that you can manufacture more in the same time. Um, it's only a 20% reduction. Uh, so it's a 0.8 multiplier on the time, but that 0.8 multiplier works out at a 25% increase in how much you can manufacture in the same time period. But you right click on it, pick the kind of research you want to do, then pick the number of levels which you want to add to it. Each level is more expensive than the level before and takes longer. Well, at least I'm pretty sure it takes longer. Um, the time calculations are on my site. Um, to go from nine to 10 is a real jump in cost. Uh, for only a 1% benefit. With some blueprints, it's really not worth doing that level of research unless you're doing mass production on them. Uh, when they do all the calculations, everything gets rounded up to the next, well, it gets ceilinged to the next number. If it's at all above uh, a number, it's gone up to the next one. Um, so, but that only happens after you've picked how many runs you're going to do. So if you have something which uses 0 0.9 of a thing, and you make one of them, that'll cost you one thing. So if you do it 10 times, that'll cost you 10 of them. If you make 100 of them all in one go, that will cost you 90 of the thing, a saving of 10 whole items, which can be really significant. Um, of, it's all dependent on the scale that you can do. Uh, the big limit there is you cannot put in a job which will take more than 30 days unless it's a single run. Uh, if it was two runs, wouldn't let you put it in. Uh, so that's how you judge where the appropriate uh, points are. Uh, also, you've got things like uh, post structures and outposts, which have um, changes, but they've got their own ME bonuses. So something which might be sitting at ME8 could become ME10 uh, effectively. And uh, it doesn't actually work like that because it's a separate multiplier. Um, but you can still work out where the balance points are. Um, it, there's a lot of little numbers to tweak, which is why tools become really handy for this kind of thing. Um, mostly because it's a real pain to try and juggle this in your head or in a spreadsheet. It's doable, but it's not fun. And it becomes the game of spreadsheet and space then at that point, because it became so complicated, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, if you're trying to do manufacturing and you don't have at least a tool like my white website, uh, you're not going to do too well. It's possible, but you will probably end up losing money or at least not making a great deal of profit. Um, there are a lot of items where the profit margin is really minimal. Um, other places it's worthwhile, but uh, that varies. Um, I do a lot of T2 manufacturing, uh, which is a wee bit more complicated than regular manufacturing, mostly because there's an additional step with a chance-based mechanic. Um, but the numbers there really vary, especially because you've got uh, it, the run times for modules in T2. Once you've manufactured them, you can only make 10 at a time normally. And the downside there is you're talking between three to six hours for most of those to be manufactured. Um, so the ISC per hour tends to be reasonable, but you're only going to get one or two of those per day. So your ISC per 24 hours, which is how I tend to judge this stuff, doesn't work out quite so well. Um, obviously, the people that can be at their computers on a semi-regular basis, uh, just coming back every four hours, six hours, whatever, will make more money just because they can put in another job. Um, I don't expect that to change, except possibly pushing those times up because I think they've fallen a little too far, which is why T2 modules have gone to the, well, there's a real flaw 
in the cost there just because they are stupidly cheap to make and stupidly cheap to buy and the profit is not there if you spread it out over the 24 hours uh, which is what you pretty much used to have to do because it was like an 11 hour or 10 hour build time and most people are only at the computer for well they're not at the computer at the beginning and about the end so you could put another one in okay uh do we have any other questions about industry for steve yeah, Steve. Uh, so industry, like you said, uh, went through a massive change uh, last summer through Cryos. Where do you feel CCP has felt about the changes? And do you think, uh, where, where do you feel industry is going to be going forward in the future? Um, to be honest, I don't expect to see much in the way of changes coming from industry directly. Uh, however, um, with the new structure stuff that's coming out, that's going to make some fair changes to like the infrastructure that you need to build, well, to handle industry. Um, it's going to be, I suspect, easier for people to lay their hands on POS, for example. Um, and there'll be more benefits to having the POS out in wilder space because you'll be able to use different kinds of rigs, which will give you different benefits and so on. Um, whereas in high sec, you'll be restricted to using the less so good ones um, which in some ways is a good thing because at the moment high sec is where industry makes sense to do uh, because the risk is just not worth doing it out um, in low null wormhole uh, except for very particular things uh, so I suspect that will be a major change um, exactly how far people take it is going to be interesting but I suspect it's going to be significant and do you have any uh, quality of life things that you want CCP to do to like adjust industry in a particular way that you think is like as a CSM member is either hurting the game or we make the game more uh, enjoyable for those who do the industry in the sense that it makes it more engaging? Um, not so much, actually. Uh, they've dealt with a great deal of the quality of life stuff already with the Cryos release, because it used to be that Indo history was incredibly clicky. Uh, now, that the number of clicks involved has fallen through the floor. Um, I do think they've taken some of it a little too far, with, like, T2 manufacturing taking less time now than it used to. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but that's why some things are now stupidly cheap compared to what they used to be like. In general, though, I don't think industry needs much of a change, at least not for now. Um, there's a few places where uh, some of the contents of blueprints aren't quite what I would expect, uh, but I think that's being looked at. All right, uh, so do we have any final questions for Steve uh, before we end this lecture? Okay, uh, Steve, thank you very much for stopping by and giving a lecture on industry. I know a lot of our guys are very interested in it and some of them have dabbled in it here and there. Uh, and thank you very much again for doing all the work on CSM as well. Uh, where can we find out, like, you know, some information or what you suggest to do in certain areas? Like, you mentioned a blog. Like, where can we find that? Uh, my blog is on uh, probably the easiest address to go to is fuzzwork.enterprises. I'll get you to it. Uh, if anyone has any questions that they want to ask uh, or come up with later, uh, feel free to email me, email me, drop me a message on uh, the tweet feed, Slack, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I need to write more for my blog because I haven't been writing on it recently. Uh, probably should do a 101 there. But yeah, um, yeah, feel free to contact me about anything. All right, awesome. Thank you very much. And that does that for this Pandemic Horde lecture.